Did uh, Queen Victoria do a good job? Well, you might well ask whether she even had a job. I, I suppose the answer is that she had duties. Uh, they in, included and include opening uh, each new session of Parliament, uh, giving royal assent to legislation, approving orders and proclamations through the Privy Council. Uh, she also has a special relationship with the Prime Minister. She meets them uh, once a week, apparently, uh, and even apparently has the right to appoint him. Um, he, has, they, he has to go to her to approve uh, his new government. Now, some uh, would say that these are all just meaningless ceremonial vestiges of the, of the distant past, while, while others would say mm, uh, she demonstrated great leadership and presence in her role, both as the head of the world's largest empire and that of the Empress of India. So, take your choice. <laughs> Here we go. Well, first of all, those who say, yes, yes, she did. She did do a good job. Well, first of all, thanks to her massive uh, reconstruction projects, Buckingham Palace became the uh, definite seat of power, uh, really, for the empire, for subsequent British monarchs, including the current queen, a vitally important national symbol, and she, she preserved it. Uh, she decided to donate out of her own pocket a, a substantial sum of money, 2,000 pounds, that was a lot then, to help the victims of the awful Irish famine. Uh, her donation was the biggest, apparently, of uh, many donations which uh, came to help Ireland in her time of need. Uh, she believed that there was a need for Britain to have a cordial relationship with France. Uh, she went there a number of times. She met with French leaders, uh, such as King Louis Philippe. Uh, she was the first British queen to meet with the King of France, and similarly, Louis was the first uh, French king to uh, visit Britain, uh, which he did in 1844. Um, keeping cordial relations with Britain's nearest neighbor was obviously an important uh, diplomatic and, and political achievement. She uh, famously wedded Prince Albert from Germany. Uh, it was a, a good marriage. It lasted until his untimely death in 1861. It was also a good choice. Uh, he was an educated, cultured man. He had a great impact not only on her, but on the nation as a whole. He, he was a real Renaissance man. And it's uh, to her credit uh, that she picked him. And although Queen Victoria believed in the ideals of an empire, she was also concerned about the rights of the Indian people. And in 1858, she issued something that's become known as the Magna Carta of the People of India, a proclamation to that effect. It went a long way toward protecting the rights of the Indian people, so she was looking after them. And her time, of course, famously saw huge advancements in medicine, transportation, communication, science, industry of all kinds. It saw inventions such as the telegraph, the internal combustion engine, uh, the development of antiseptics, anesthetics, uh, wonderful improvements in medicine. Uh, some would say that it, you know, it was not she, of course, who accomplished those things, but she certainly set the tone and atmosphere for the nation, which in turn encouraged and inspired uh, these uh, wonderful developments. She was a fine linguist, as well as being fluent in both English and German. She also spoke French, Italian, and, and even Latin. Uh, she thus symbolically endorsed culture and education. No small... Uh, step on her part to do so. Over the course of their 21-year marriage, Victoria and Albert raised nine children together uh, as a means of extending Britain's influence and building international alliances. A number of their sons and daughters were married into various European monarchies. Her 42 grandchildren were found in royal families all over Europe, in Germany, Russia, Greece, Romania, Sweden, Norway, Spain. She thus advanced Britain's influence and interests. So, all in all, a pretty long list of, 
of positive things that uh, that she accomplished and uh, thus confirm the notion that yes she did do a good job well some would say no she didn't she didn't do a good job uh, first of all, her attempts to bolster European monarchies by marrying off her family members sowed the seeds of one of the 20th century's most destructive conflicts. Uh, by, by the onset of World War I in 1914, her grandchildren would turn against each other. Um, her three reigning grandchildren, the Russian Tsar Nicholas, the German Kaiser Wilhelm, and uh, the English King George V, together stumbled into World War I, one of the great calamities in the history of the world. They have to bear quite a bit of responsibility for its having happened. And lest there be any doubt, she supported and advocated the relentless colonialism of the empire she ruled. She, she wrote in 1899, we are not interested in the possibilities of defeat. They do not exist. There was no room for doubt as to her historic destiny or the might of the empire that, that was built in her name. In many respects, therefore, I'm afraid to say she was a warmonger. She married her first cousin, a long-standing tradition among many royal families seeking to confine their influence to people of uh, royal blood, but a practice now regarded not, not only as dangerous from the standpoint of public health, but one only adhered to in, uh, let's face it, primitive societies. She was a carrier of hemophilia and over subsequent generations, the, uh, the, con the uh, condition resurfaced in royal families across the continent. Her own son, Leopold, suffered from the disease. He died at age 30 after he slipped and fell. Um, three of the queen's grandchildren also suffered from the disease as did her great-grandson, the murdered heir to the Russian throne, the Tsarevich Alexei. Uh, she seems to have ignored her children, uh, owing to her obsession with her husband, and thus, I'm afraid, establishing a tradition of brutally indifferent and loveless parenting, which has lived on to varying degrees right up until the present. Well, uh, those are a, a list of, uh, you know, kind of unpleasant uh, acts and, and uh, activities on her part, it doesn't, uh, doesn't augur very well. It doesn't really defend the point that she did a good job. Well, what's my take on all of this? Well, let's face it, Victoria really didn't have a job. She reigned. So the, the real question is whether she was useful. Uh, and that depends on whether you think hereditary monarchy is a good idea. Since it's on the way out everywhere, and, and especially after World War I, history has come down on the no side. So do I. So at best, the questions are relevant. I hope you like that. I'm sure that not everyone will, but there it is. That's my position. If you liked it, please... Uh, uh, do the usual, give me a like, subscribe, comment, notify, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>